Hello and welcome back to the channel. This will be the second video of our SHAP and this one will be dedicated to global interpretability. It's also the second video of our explainable AI series. For the SHAP videos, it will be three of them. I will always use the same data set. Hence, if you have done either of the previous two videos and you already have the script, you can just skip to the last section which is, of course, dedicated uh, to SHAP. If you're interested in learning more about SHAP, I have a Udemy course where you use SHAP and also do XGBoost, the hyperparameter tuning, and so on. I think it's a really cool course, so please be sure to check it out. For this video, what we are going to kick it off is with installing some libraries. So what we need to do is to first exclamation mark, then pip install and then we need to do the pi dataset because this is where is the dataset that we'll use. And then as well, pip install shap. So these are the two libraries that we need to install. Here you go, control enter. And after everything is installed, let me close it down and then import library. So from pi dataset, I import data and then import pandas as pd. Here we go. Let me also put this down here and I'm missing data. So this one should work. And now let's do the data part. So df equals two, and then I use data and then in single quotes, I include housing with capital H. So please be sure to include it as well. And let's also have a look at our data. So what do we retrieve? So df.head and here we go. And what we'll see is that we have first a lot of uh, string variables that will transform into dummy variables. And then we have here the price, which is our dependent variable. We are studying how much do these drivers affect our total price. Now that we have imported the data and the library, so let me close this one and let's start with the data prep, starting by opening a cell line. And the first thing is that we'll transform those string variables into dummy variables. So df equals two, you go to pandas and then use get underscore dummies, open parentheses, and then we include our df and then we drop first in order to not fall into the dummy variable trap. Here you go. Let's also have a look and see what do we get in the end. Here you go. And we see here that we have our ones and zeros. It's time to go to the next one. And here, what we need to do is that we need to isolate X and Y. And for Y is super simple. So Y equals to the F dot I lock open the square brackets, we want all the observations, comma, and then it is in index zero. And here you go. And if y is easy, x is easy as well. So df dot i lock, open the square brackets, all the observations, and then starting from index one, and then up until the very last one. And here we go. This is actually it. Actually, no, because I am horrible at spelling and now it should work. And then the next step is that we need to create the training and test set. And this one is also quite simple as well. So what we need to do, so from sklearn, and we need to do dot model selection, and we need to import the train test split. And here we now create our X train x test, then the y train, and then the y test, which is equal to use the function that we have just imported. So the train test split. And then inside, we include our x, our y, we include the test size, which will be 0 0.2. And then let's also include a random state so that you get similar results to me. So random state equals two. And then I just do 1502. And I'm missing a comma here. This one I noticed. And let's do control enter. And here we go. 
And if you want to confirm, you can for instance just do x train and then dot head and have a look to see what you get. But of course, put the capital X because otherwise you'll get an error same way as me. And here we go. So now we can actually do our random forest and we need to do from sklearn dot ensemble we need to import the random forest regressor and then we create our model and then we use our random forest regressor to then inside we include the number of estimators and let's include equal to 20 so that it is simple and then again a random state so that we get similar results so 15 0 2 again then we use our model to fit it to our x train and to our y train and here we go control enter again my spelling so number of estimators and here we go so control enter and now it has worked and now we are finally ready to do our shap and here so we import shap then we create this explainer object that would then feed our global interpretability and we are going to have a look at the shap values in general so we use shap and then we use tree explainer and here we go and then inside we just include our model and again of course so we need to import shap without the comment and what we need to do next so now it's time for the global interpretability and to do this what we need to do first thing is that i would highlight that we are using random forest and shap and random forest are not so well integrated they're not as well integrated as for instance xgboost and shap and as a result if you actually use the total number of observations that we have it would take a lot a lot of time so what we're going to use is a sample so we're going to create this sample of 100 so sample equals 2 and then we use our x test then dot sample and then we are going to include uh, 100 and what can we do next so we're going to create our sharp values which will be equal to and then we use the explainer that we have just created to do then sharp values and then inside the sharp values we include the sample that we have just created and then we go to sharp and then we do our summary plot summary underscore plot and inside so we are going to include the sharp values and then we are going to include the sample and then we are going to put a max display equals to 10 so that only the top 10 most important variables appear in our data and you can use 10 you can use 5 you can use 3 and this is the important part now let's have a look and let's interpret it and the key thing is that red means high and blue means low and then here we have the sharp value impact as a result if you see the red ones on the right side of zero it means that the high value of a certain variable they would impact positively the price of the houses and the other way around for blue so if you see blue on the left and in a sense we see this you know it's very striking so in general when it comes to house prices the more of everything the better so the more garages the more bedrooms the more stories the more bathrooms the more lot size everything contributes positively towards price which is something that we would have expected, I would say. And as well, it's something that intuitively, it does make sense. And then one last thing is that I think this is a cool thing to present to everyone. So if you are in a team and you present the results and then use SHAP, I think this is a cool one to present. But for instance, I would start off the presentation by just presenting the, you know, the top three because usually the top three they're very clear right so you see here it's very striking and there's usually a perfect split between the high and the low values 
and then as you go along variables that have a lower importance in predicting, you will also see that it is more of a mixed filling. So to show this, start by showing the top three, and then explain it, and then you can actually increase the amount of variables if you think it's worthwhile. As a result, we are done with this video. There is one video that has been done before, which was the local interpretability. And then there's another one, which will be on the dependency plots, which I hope that you watch all of them. And I'm looking forward to seeing you in another video. And until then, have fun.